is increasing rapidly. Um, and this graph actually continues to your right um, with, with many countries that are living uh, below the one planet level. Uh, the problem is most of those countries are living in poverty and this is really the, the challenge we're facing is how do we reduce our, our consumption down to a sustainable level while maintaining the, the quality of life we're used to and maintaining the standards of living we're accustomed to. Um, our first experiment in this it w was at Beds Edge, the, um, the designed to be zero carbon development in, in South East London. Um, and there's been a massive amount of monitoring of the performance of Beds Edge. Uh, and um, from that we've learned that, that Beds Edge, if it was fully functioning, um, and that's a whole nother, nother story, um, would save about five tonnes of carbon per person. Roughly 50% of that uh, comes from the building design and the renewable energy on, on site. Um, and the other 44% comes from lifestyle changes. So uh, there's a food strategy on site, transport strategy, the parking ratio at, at Beds Ed's uh, half in the, in the uh, compared to the neighbouring areas, and uh, car mileage of residents of Beds Ed is actually about a third uh, compared to the Sutton, the Sutton area. Strategies to reduce waste. And the message we really took from that is that lifestyles are as important as green buildings. There's a huge amount of effort going into designing better buildings, to making them more efficient, build them to code level six. Um, but if we build them in the wrong places, or forget about the people who are going to live in them, we're actually missing half the story, and, and missing a huge opportunity to, to actually um, enable people to live more sustainably. It's um, one of those things that people don't kind of wake up in the morning and think, today I'm going to live a, a three-planet lifestyle. So they wake up in the morning in their uh, suburban location with no public transport, where they have to drive to work after taking the kids to school and drive to the supermarket for food. So we need to think about these aspects when, when we're designing, not, not just uh, designing a building. Um, and this is really borne out if you look at the, the breakdown of, of uh, the average ecological footprint of someone in the UK. Um, so about 20% of that is, is energy production, but an equivalent amount is, of that is food. And it's obviously often surprises people who they think, well, they, they don't waste food and they buy organic and local food. Uh, but actually it's the change to our diets that's happened in the last 50 years that, that's really driven up the footprint of, of, of food. Um, as people have started to eat higher up the food chain, we're actually requiring a lot more inputs and land area to... to um, to produce the food we eat and the easiest way of, of reducing your food footprint apart from not throwing about a quarter of it away when it's perfectly good to eat is to eat less meat and dairy products um, and this is clearly a, you know, from a lifestyle point of view a hugely challenging message to give uh, DEFRA wrote a report on it and the Daily Mail got hold of it and ran the headline about the secret plan to turn us all into vegetarians um, it's, it's a really contentious issue that needs to be tackled in a sensitive fashion. And the other important uh, aspect to note of this is that one, one uh, planet of our footprint, services, government and factories, we as individuals have no control over and, uh, and you as uh, architects or, or whatever as designers also have quite, quite a limited control over. It requires uh, governmental change or institutional change to actually ensure that the services that are provided are provided in a more sustainable fashion. Um, the other sort of take home message from, from research at Bed Z was that you can really only achieve one planet living on a neighbourhood scale. So it is possible to achieve one planet living at Bed Z as long as you basically never leave Bed Z. Um, and there are a few people who live and work there, but even them tend to go to the shops occasionally or you know, go out. Um, to, 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 to be able to reduce our footprint down to the one planet level, we need to have all of the services that, that we need. Um, being provided sustainab sustainably um, which led us to the, the One Planet um, concept which I'll come on to uh, just to pick up on one other aspect those of you who have been following intently would have noticed that there was only 94% of the, the savings covered um, the other 6% came from uh, the choice of building materials so we did a lot of uh, analysis and the embodied energy and the life cycle analysis of, of the different building uh, materials 
and, and over the life cycle of the building this should reduce the footprint by about 6%. Um, and embodied energy is going to become increasingly important as we start designing zero carbon homes then, then we need to ensure that the embodied energy is almost zero. So the One Planet Network is the One Planet program is a, it's a network of international projects uh, around the globe which are all using uh, this framework to, to, to frame their, their projects and, and their approach to sustainability. So the ecological footprint kind of gives the challenge, and then we use this framework to give an answer. There's obviously many sustainability frameworks, but what we've done is, is put together. Um, technological principles I suppose like carbon and waste so we need to build zero carbon standards but also social principles like um, sustainable food and sustainable materials we need to be enabling people to buy these buy these products locally and sustainably and then issues like equity and fair trade and health and happiness ultimately we need to be able to achieve this while living a healthy and happy lifestyle I think the benefits of this are it's looking at the three prongs of sustainable development, they're, they're financial, environmental and social. The, one of the projects we're working on is based in Sutton, uh, trying to make Sutton a one planet borough. And what we've done is look at, at the footprint of the residents of, of Sutton and are then uh, developing projects to try and uh, challenge or to try and reduce the footprint. So we, we've got low carbon zone status for, one, for the uh, ward that, that has BEDZ is based in, so we're trying to retrofit that. We've got a food project looking at getting local food into the schools and hospitals, looking to try and create a material reuse centre, and then also embed these things into the local authority. Uh, One Brighton is a development that's been uh, built by our sister organisation, Bioregional Quintain. Uh, and what we've done is use ecological footprint analysis to, to look at different scenarios of, of people living in um, here, here at One Brighton, but, but also in a Code 6 house or, or in a different development. Um, and again, the, the, what it shows is that the, an average person living at, at One Brighton uh, would save about an extra two tonnes of carbon compared to someone living in, in a Code 6 home because it has the zero car parking for start, so you can't own a, own a car. There's um, a local food store in the basement, there's allotments on the roof. Uh, so there's a lot of initiatives to, to encourage people to live a more sustainable lifestyle. Um, but it's also worth noting that even if you did everything that's that's available there because this is just one one block this, it doesn't get your your footprint down to one planet level you're still emitting about six tons of carbon per person Another project that, we, we, that has been using this approach is Sonoma Mountain Village, uh, which is in San Francisco. Uh, and this is a much larger scale, it's about 2,000 uh, units and, uh, uh, with a large data centre that's been um, reused already. Um, and this, this shows that actually in America, because we're starting from a much higher baseline, but also because this project is, is much larger and is able to include things like schools, doctors, surgery, shops, uh, the potential to reduce the, the, the the uh, footprint is much. The, the One Planet initiative, it's, it's about trying to set a, a, a framework of what is truly sustainable. So um, instead of having to talk about sustainable development, there's a benchmark that we can aim for and say this is, this is ultimately where we need to be getting to. Uh, and we're trying to work with partners to get there, to show, to show today that that's achievable. And then we can hold these, these case studies up and, and encourage more people to do the same. Uh, I think it's applicable to, to, to new buildings but also to retrofitting communities. Um, and the most important aspect is that it acknowledges the need for lifestyle change.